Okay. Uh, obviously disappointed, like we talked about yesterday, frustrated. Um, you work really hard to go down there and, and get a win as a team, um, and we don't come away with that. There's always good. There's always things that, that you, you uh, want to continue to do and, and some individual performances and those type of things. There's always good, um, but we got to really look at it and, and look at ways that we can go get that win and, and uh, offense, defense, special teams, players, coaches, all of us uh, find a way to go get that win. And so when you don't do it, it's very, very frustrating. Uh, having said that, we know where we are. We know we got an AFC opponent coming to our place this week. So we got to make sure that we learn from it and then move on. And with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you, Coach. The first question will be from Scott Petrick. Hey, Kevin. I wanted to ask you about two specific play calls. And after watching film, why they didn't work from a schematic and coverage standpoint, the first fourth and two, and then that second and one where you wind up getting a holding call. So the first fourth and two. Yeah, the pass um, after Nick was stopped for minus two. Yeah, I think it was fourth and three fourth. from the four. Um, yeah, uh, you know, on some of these, Scott, I don't want to get too far into the weeds, into the details, other than tell you we, we didn't uh, – didn't come off exactly how we wanted to. Um, and that's unfortunate. Uh, and then down there in the, uh, you, know, you get first and one down there at, you know, we absolutely obviously have to come away with seven points. Um, you know, didn't punch it in on first down passed it and, and got a hold, which backs us up, which is really, you know, frustrating. Uh, I, I feel confident that with some cracks at it from the one, we're going to score a touchdown, obviously. Um, but I just I think the overall point, Scott, is is it's 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 players, it's coaches, it's all of us. We just we have to be better. Well, when you go jumbo on that second and one, right, with Michael and Yalda, are you assuming that they're going to really devote everything to the run and you're going to be able to catch them off guard throwing the ball there? Yeah, I think what we do when when we get down there, um, you know, you have a plan for goal line, and and they had not been in goal line this season, so you kind of got to be. You're also waiting to see what their alignment, what their front is this season. Um, and when, when the passes aren't there, you know, sometimes you're, you're fortunate enough to scheme a guy open down there. Uh, and when you don't, you hope it's an incomplete and then it's third and one from the one. Um, but unfortunately, uh, we had the holding penalty. Thanks, Scott. Mary Kay Cabot is next. Uh, yeah, Kevin, can you kind of give us uh, what you think the outlight look might be for Miles and Jadavian heading into this week? Yeah, I think we need to get to Wednesday, Mary Kay, and then kind of take in information as we go and see how those guys feel, see how they look. Uh, but until we get to Wednesday, I think it's probably premature. There was a report that that Miles was going to be bothered by this AC joint sprain for for two to four weeks. Uh, can you can you say if that's accurate accurate and does that necessarily mean that he would need to miss more time with that or is that up in the air? Yeah, I don't know uh, about that specific report, Mary Kay. Um, I would just tell you I want to get to Wednesday. I, I know he's feeling better, um, so we'll see where we are come Wednesday. Thanks, Mary Kay. Let's go to Tony Grossi. Hey, Kevin. <clears throat> I got two quick questions. The first one. In those situations where you go to your director of football strategy upstairs, does he provide you just with data or does he make a decision on his own and you'll buy by it? Yeah, I'm not sure who the director of football strategy is you're referring to, Tony, but um, – Don't have, you have a guy upstairs, Giuliani? Yeah, we have a lot of coaches upstairs. I think for, for me, Tony, and on all, all those decisions, it is 100% – me making the decision. I take in information from our coaches, from our staff, uh, up in the booth, on the sideline. And then, you know, ultimately you got to own them. Um, and when they don't work, it, you're frustrated, but it's my decision. Um, and, I, and I understand what you're asking. Uh, but when we get down in those situations, I, I take in all the information that I make a decision. Okay. And the, my other question was on the, on the, uh, the fourth and three set he threw the ball against the barrier on fourth down what did he tell you why did he do that I mean it's fourth down when he why not give somebody a chance for a PI or something yeah he was trying to throw a high ball to Dave um and and the ball got away from him but uh yeah I mean play listen plays I want back plays he wants back that, that's the nature of this game thanks Tony Darren Ryder you're up 
Yeah, Kevin, defensive question for you. I, I think Atlanta ran it 15 or 16 straight times there uh, in the second half. Just for, from your perspective, what was so problematic for you guys as far as slowing that down? Yeah, you know, they committed to the run there and, and that drive and, and in the second half, and uh, it's never one thing. I, I thought we, uh, we, we played hard. Uh, there were times that, that we executed really well. There's times that maybe it's one guy here or there. Uh, certainly, you want to put the guys in position to go make plays, but in those moments, you got to find a way uh, to to get them off the field. And and a lot of times that that can be pursuit related. That can be making sure that we're assignment sound. All, all those things. Um, but you got you have to find a way to get them off the field. And then I want to ask you about Kareem in the in the passing game. I think he had two catches yesterday. But in that second half, I mean, he's such a physical, violent runner, and the the way he was disposing of some of those Falcons uh, defenders in that, is that something when you go back and you you look at the film? I, I know you want to get Nick's his touches when you're running the ball, but is that something when you go back and look at the film, you kind of maybe file it, hey, you know, we can get Kareem more involved with, with the pass game if we can't get him handoffs? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a balance. Uh, we, we have two... Guys, we've talked about many, many times. We have one A and one B, and, and I trust both those guys. Uh, and, and sometimes it shakes out with different opportunities, but certainly you want Kareem to touch the ball and the run and the pass. Thanks, Daryl. Fred Greetham, go ahead. Yeah, Coach, going to the game, and arguably their three big players, Mariota, you hold them to seven completions, and Patterson to 38 yards, and, and Pitts to one catch. You know, and then they go to the smash mouth game. I mean, is that scheme? Is it personnel? I mean, what is because you're down three defensive linemen, you know, that's got to be frustrating kind of getting beat at your own game. I mean, you come in leading the league and rushing. Yeah, I think, Fred, the frustration is is, um, not winning. And I think the frustration is, to your point, uh, with with limiting some of their really good players, uh, which I thought the defense did a nice job. And then, Obviously, we just ha- had a, a couple drives that we'd like back, but it's just the margin. This in the margins in this game are so small, um, and you and you're trying to take away multiple guys. And you know, there's some really really good effort out there. Uh, we just got to learn from the ones that we can clean up, the plays that we know we can we can finish, or we can put the guys in position to make a play. We got to learn from those. Thank you, Fred. Jeff Chanel, you have our next question. Yes, Kevin, I have a couple of defensive questions for you, too. Um, the, the, the long pass, the 42-yard completion there at the end, was that the same issue um, in, in the Panthers game and the Jets game, or is this something different? Yeah, so I, I don't want to get into the specifics, similar to what Scott and I were talking about earlier. Uh, you know, sometimes it's miscommunication. In this case, just uh, didn't play a technique how we want to. Um, and, and that's unfortunate. And those are the type of things where big plays can happen when, when you know, uh, we get out of a gap or, or we miss an assignment, whatever it is. Um, but the bottom line is we own this as a as a team. We own the wins as a team. We own the losses as a team. And similarly, players and coaches, we uh, there's plenty of stuff that we can all clean up. And then on that, that uh, run, that series where they kept running the ball on you, is that a common – was there a common – mistaken there and did you think about calling a timeout when they seem to have you on your heels yeah no I, I think to the first part of your question Jeff no I don't think there was one common theme uh, on that uh, and no didn't think about calling a timeout just because those are so valuable uh, potentially late in the game thank you Jeff back to Scott Petrick hey Kevin the screen game for you is usually really effective why do you think it wasn't yesterday yeah you know uh that's part of the frustration for me. Uh, I got to put the guys in position. Um, it f- felt like there were some opportunities there. Um, that give them credit. They made plays. And, and that's really the truth. And on that second and 11, where you tried to get it to Kareem after the holding penalty, um, like does Jacoby have to figure out a way to get on the ball? I know there was pressure there, but it looked like it was going to go for a touchdown. Yeah. Honestly, Scott, it's, it's way easier said than done. You know, uh, we all, I don't want to, be something that's obvious. Uh, Yeah, we're trying to complete it to him, but these defenders are long, um, so we we couldn't get it done in that play, but that's uh, easier said than done. Thank you, Scott. Mary Kay Cabot, you're up. 
Uh, yeah, Kevin, on uh, Jacoby's pick at the end, I mean, do you, it, it looked like there could have been some other guys open on that. I mean, do you think that he was just maybe pressing too hard, trying to do too much and did the only thing he really couldn't do there? Yeah, you know, again, I think, I'm sure you guys will talk to Jacoby. Um, I know it's a play he wants back. He's trying to make a play for this team, which, uh, you know, we appreciate. He fights like crazy. Uh, he's we, We've seen him in a two-minute make some big throws for us to, to help us uh, go win a game earlier this year. So uh, just a, a tough play. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Mary Kate. Hey, Tony Grossi, go ahead. Kevin, um, is there a way that you guys can get Chester Rogers on the 53? Uh, Prefer kind of hinted that that would make things a little easier rather than going week to week with the practice squad uh, designations. Yeah, I think the roster, Tony, is always fluid. Um, you're always looking game to game who can help you. Uh, so I think everything's possible, yes. All right, thanks. Thank you, Tony. Cam Justice is next. Hey, Kevin. I'm going to go back to that that Falcons drive that saw them you know, drive downfield at 10 straight runs. It seemed like their line was pulling really well in some of those plays that got them those gaps to shoot down the field. Is there anything, though, that you can take away from that in terms of either switching up what's being called defensively or getting your front and the linebackers more up to speed to read that, to prevent that from happening over and over again? Or is that just good on Atlanta? Yeah, I mean, number one, to your point, Cam, I think you have to give them credit. Uh, they're they're a good run football team. We knew that going into it. They have some really good players up front. They run hard at, at the running back position. It's a good scheme. Uh, having said that, there's certain plays that, that we can we can just do a little bit better job, stay in our gap, whatever it may be. Obviously, you can always look at the play call and say, could we have done this? Could we have done that? Um, so it's, it's all of the above is really the truth. Did you feel like the – the injuries that you had to the defensive line and that pass rush, maybe not having it from Miles Garrett and Jadavion Clowney, maybe impacted the other layers of your defense at all? I mean, listen, uh, you want your players out there and all those type of things, but we have a ton of confidence in the guys that were playing yesterday. Thank you, Cam. We'll take two more for Coach Tom Withers, Mary Kay Cabot. Tom? Rob, thanks. Hey, Coach, back to that early fourth and three that Scott brought up before. I know you don't want to get too much in the weeds. Nick came open as a late option there. Is he an early pass option as well, or did he get caught up in traffic, or what happened there? Yeah, so I think if you if you watch it, you can kind of see it unfold. Um, you know, again, I, I would give them credit, Tom. They, they made a play, um, and, and we'll we'll learn from it. And as you can imagine, there are plenty of people in this town that'd like to see Nick Chubb carry the ball 57 times a game. Um, were you satisfied with his number of touches yesterday and, and the way you were able to use him, particularly on the fourth and the last drive? People are talking a lot about why he's not on the field there. Yeah. Um, you're always in constant communication, knowing how many touches Nick has, how many touches Kareem has. And really, all of our guys that want to touch the ball, that's a constant dialogue uh, throughout the game. Um, you know, when, when Nick, when we're able to run the ball late in the game, uh, obviously Nick and Kareem are, are the main cogs to that. Uh, in, in that situation, just the two-minute drive being what it was, uh, I was comfortable with, with the uh, roles that we had. Thank you, Tom. Final one for Coach Mary Kay Cabot. Uh, you may not have had an opportunity to hear John Harbaugh discuss uh, those guys kind of, you know, going for the touchdown and not the field goal on fourth and two at the end of their game. You may or may not have had the opportunity to do that, but I'm just wondering if you have, can you sort of identify with what, what he's going through over there today, just in terms of if it works, it looks like a great play. If it doesn't work, uh, you know, everybody wants to kind of run you out of town. So, you know, that's the first part of it. And then, you know, if you can't speak specifically to him, I mean, do you feel like there were so many plays to be made in the second half that, is too much being made out of fourth and three? Uh, well, I can't speak to what happened with Coach Harbaugh. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, to your overall point, Mary Kay, it's a, you really don't know what plays in, in the game uh, are going to have a, a huge effect. And sometimes it's early, sometimes it's late. Uh, it, you know, I want to put our guys in best position to succeed. Um, when I don't do that, you look at it and, and you certainly want to make sure that you're making all the best decisions for your guys. And, and we'll look at all those type of things. Um, but at the end of the day, I think our team understands how we want to play uh, offense, defense, special teams, how we want to play uh, game in and game out and just give our guys opportunities uh, to succeed.